Hello there, and welcome to 343 TV with yours truly, Justin Beck. And this is Electronic Music Essentials. Now, I must say that today is a special stream for me, as it is going to actually be my l last for an indefinite period of time. Um, I've been streaming here on the channel for uh, almost like a year and a half now, I think, uh, you know, starting from the pandemic and whatnot. And it's just come time for me to have to uh, step aside and focus on some of my own uh, personal projects for a little while. And so it's really cool right now to see some of you guys here in the chat that have been uh, sticking around for, you know, like the majority of the time that I've been streaming. Um, and I hope that today I can give you guys a good one final stream and leave you with uh, a little something that will maybe inspire you to, um, you know, to keep working hard on your music production and stuff. Um, and as always, thank you for uh, keeping me honest with my presentation and production in terms of the vocals uh, being too quiet. Um, so first off, what's up, William Mind Readers, Silent State, John Kingston the Third, Danica Becker, Enigmatic Onion, Pavel, Rashain. Great to see you guys in here as always. Um, anyhow, so for those of you that are joining for the first time, and you're like, what the hell is this guy talking about? I've never even seen him before. What have I tuned into? Well, this is three four three TV. And 343 TV is the online free educational extension of the music production school, 343 Labs. We are based in New York City, Berlin, and of course, online. We offer classes in everything from Ableton and Logic to mixing and mastering and everything in between. Really, anything that you need to learn or know to be a successful contemporary music producer, we offer. And um, so, yeah, if you are new to the channel and new to the school um, and the ecosystem that we have you know, been building and providing, I highly encourage you to hit the subscribe button. There's an amazing community of talented producers uh, that are working together, you know, to learn and, you know, up their game. So, yeah, you know, go ahead and check out 343labs.com as well if you're interested in taking some classes. Anyway, what I want to be able to do... Um, what I want to be able to do is leave you guys with a final lesson today that I feel really is like encapsulates the ethos of what I've been trying to teach and impart over the course of, you know, tens to twenties hours of streaming. I mean, realistically, this, I've probably streamed for over 50 hours, you know, more uh, with you guys here on the channel. And so... I love how much how engaged you are and how dedicated you are, you know, to up to, to becoming better music producers and better musicians. And I, what I want to do today is leave you with really uh, what I'm what it's going to be is I'm just going to get into a bit of detail and depth and expand on what my ethos is and what my philosophy is to music production and, you know, and creativity writ large. Um, and, you know, take it or leave it but i hope that within this you can find something inspiring right as always as I, as I always say what i am saying is not gospel it's not intended to be taken that way ever it's always just suggestions and principles right so uh, i appreciate the love you guys are dropping into the chat it's been lovely you know getting to uh know you in here and i feel like some of you guys i know even though we've never met which is so cool um anyway Without any further ado, let's just jump into it. Um, so, you know, we live in a very interesting time for music, um, to say the least, right? The world itself is just kind of in a crazy state. And I personally always believe that uh, art has the capacity to allow us to transcend and 
is not not escape but actually um improve and move outside of in a certain sense some of the restrictions of just everyday reality and you know these huge forces that we cannot control um and i think the most beautiful thing about music to me is that it is a distinctly unique art form in that it doesn't it's immediate right there are very few other art forms where it can affect you on such a profound level immediately you know uh, I love movies and I love books and I love paintings and I love poetry and I love, you know, all the different types of art that exists, all the different mediums. But I think music is unique. I'm not saying it's the best, it's just unique. And it's different in that it allows you to tap directly into emotion, which is wild and really cool. Um, you know, if you play the right combination of chords in the right way, you can make someone's day or ruin someone's day, you know? Uh, you can make someone cry. You can make someone uh, feel okay about something maybe they, they weren't feeling okay with, right? And so on that level, music is, is really special and cool. Um, with all that being said, right, we can sit here, I can sit here and, and, and talk about, um, you know, philosophize if you will about the beauties of music and yada 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 and everything abstract but at the end of the day uh the hardest thing to do in art and in music is to marry your thought process and philosophy and approach to how you think should things should be and um and to how you know you you want things to be in your art and music versus how you actually are able to make it be right so in my eyes, like the, the highest art form, the highest forms of art, rather, are the, are the perfect meeting of intention and, and uh, technique. Um, now, with that being said, right, I think I, I, t I tend to gravitate towards a lot of improvisational things in music and chaos and things that are unexpected. You know, I like to, to generate that. But the whole, the whole idea is that I think in order to produce something that is truly moving and meaningful, you have to have a certain level of technical understanding. Whether you're a painter, whether you are a writer, whether you are a songwriter or a music producer, right? Um, and so the very first thing I would say to all of you who are watching, regardless of your skill level, right, is that especially if, if you're not making a living off of music yet, and that's your, your dream, Right, and that's your goal to be making a living off of music. The first thing you have to do is be patient and realistic with yourself, right? And what I mean by that is, it is unrealistic to think that you will open Ableton after a month of knowing how to op of knowing how to interact with Ableton, and that you're going to make a song that is going to be as good as your favorite songs, as good as your favorite artists, right? Uh, and that you're going to make something that everyone in the world is going to want to listen to, right? Or at least all the people that you want to listen to it are going to want to listen to. I'm not saying that can't happen. I'm just saying that's an unrealistic expectation to have, right? So what I would always say, what I, what I could speak, say for myself, right, is, you know, I've been putting out records for a while and, um, you know, have been having a decent amount of success with people, you know, enjoying my music and uh, playing shows and things like that. But the thing is, is that from the first day that I opened up GarageBand when I was 15 years old and had literally no idea what I was doing, I didn't know what quantizing was, I didn't know what scales were, nothing, right? I, uh, I knew that I could do it, right? I knew that I could do it, and I just had to learn how to do it. And so the most important thing for you to have as a musician or an artist, and this is hard because you know, it, things fluctuate, things change, and life is, is difficult, is self-belief, right? You have to believe that you are able to make something that is worthwhile and that people will want to interact with, right? And with that being said, you also have to be able to be wildly humble in that self-belief. And what I mean by that is one of the biggest mistakes that I made 
when I was first starting to make music and explore my musical career and, you know, and go down my musical journey was thinking that whatever I made was had to be put out and everyone had to hear it. This is just not the truth at all. Music is a weird art form because I can, you know, learn the chords to um, Let It Be by the Beatles and I can play it at a campfire on a guitar, right? And it'll be a beautiful song, right? Hopefully, if I don't screw it up, right? That's just a good song, period. doesn't matter who plays it. doesn't matter where they play it. It's a great song. doesn't need to be recorded. However... There's only one original Let It Be by the Beatles. Only one recording that we all play, right, and copy everywhere. And what I mean by that is to say that the most simple part of music is the hardest part of music, which is getting something that is simply just a good idea. Right? Something that's captivating. So I want you to understand that as a teacher, right? You know, I've been teaching music for two and a half years now, three years maybe. Um, as a producer, I've been producing for over 10 years easily, probably like closer to 12 or 13. But you have to understand is that music production doesn't matter. And what I mean by that is going back to the let it be example i can play that song on a guitar anywhere in the world it doesn't have to be well produced and it's a beautiful song right so where does that leave the production process then like why is let it be by the beatles so special right is it because it's a great song sure that's why but the other part of it right is also the way that it was recorded and the way that it was performed, right? So there's this great quote that I, from Miles Davis, who, and you know, for my money, is top three greatest musicians to ever live in the history of mankind. And he said, "It's eighty percent." No, I'm sorry. He said, "It's twenty percent the notes you play, and eighty percent the motherfucker who's playing them." And so this is where we take a sidestep into the realm of production, right? If I, with every person on this, in this chat, if I sent each of you a project that only had MIDI information in it, right? And what I mean by that is there are no instruments. There's literally just MIDI files where I've arranged a whole song based on MIDI, right? And you have to produce it and come up with your own instrumentation of that, every single one of you would come up with something different and very different. You'd be shocked, right? And this is where the music production part comes into play and the artistry comes into play, right? So there are two things that are really important for you to be a successful musician. Let me rephrase that. There are two things that are really important for you to make music that feels professional and complete because let's leave aside the successful thing that's a whole separate bag of onions you have to have a good song and you have to produce it compellingly period right that's the point that we're at now i say that because i'm pretty sure none of you who are watching this stream are sitting there with an acoustic guitar and making music that is only you singing and playing the guitar or only you playing on the piano and playing guitar right and if you are, well then, fuck yeah, that's dope. And thank you for watching this because it has, I think, little to do with you. But still, hopefully, you can pick some stuff up. But really, I know that most of you guys are interested in making techno and house and electronic music, you know, and maybe like neo soul or experimental R&B or whatever it is, right? But modern sounding music, you know? Um, and I think that... The two, the, the, the thing that I think about when I'm making music, right, is A, do I have something that's captivating on the level of music, on the musical level itself, right? Like, do I pick up the guitar and play three chords in such a way that my heart 
skips a beat for a second, right? Or, or my, there's a rush of emotion inside of me and I connect with that, right? That's the very first thing to look for in when you're writing a song or, or composing a piece of music. We don't have to say writing a song because I know a lot of you guys aren't making songs per se. Is, is there a part of it that, um, that triggers an emotional reaction in you, right? So that's the number one thing you should be focusing on when you are writing music, regardless of the genre you're making, is you should really not commit to trying to completely make, finish, or explore a song until you have that <gasps> aha moment where there is a specific piece of in inspiration that is musical, sonic, whatever you want, that triggers your that feeling inside of you that brings you that joy that makes you want to make the song, right? So in my opinion, it's a huge mistake to uh, approach music formulaically. And that applies to every genre of music. Now, you know, when I say approach music formulaically, maybe some people would think, um, I'm talking about house music or techno, right? Or EDM, where it's like, oh, you have a 16 to 32 bar intro and then an eight bar buildup and then a drop and then a this and then a that. And you add the hi-hat here and then you add a ride cymbal there and then you have this or, and you pull out the bass here, right? That's actually not what I'm talking about. Um, it is partially what I'm talking about, right? But when I say approaching music formulaically, I think inherently if you are making something only for it to be popular, or effective, right, in a, in a functional way, then for me, personally, I think you're missing the point of making music. Um, art, in general, is supposed to be the expression of the soul, of the innermost self that cannot be expressed in words, right? The whole beauty of art is that it allows you to communicate something incommunicable, and especially music, right? There's something contained in, in, a, in a soaring melody, even without words, that could never be put into words, right? And so to that extent, there should always be something in your song that you connect with. There should be one thing that is the driving factor. Now... If you're making electronic music, and again, I, 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 I'm pretty sure most of you are, that doesn't necessarily have to be one sound. I'm not just talking about one sound. What I'm talking about is, a, is, a, is an idea, right? So something that gets kind of confused, I think, is when we talk about, for instance, drum programming and drums and rhythm in contemporary music, right? A lot of the times people think about drums as being these individual things. Like, oh, I have my kick and I have my clap. That's a great kick. This is a cool clap, right? I like this hi-hat. Oh, here's a piece of percussion that I find over here, right? That's like the wrong way to think about drum programming, right? What it should be is, is, is my full groove a vibe? Right. And so you could have the one thing that grabs the listener, that grabs you, that inspires the emotion. It could just be the beat collectively, the beat, right? The rhythm. You would be shocked also at like how very simple rhythms often can be the most infectious, right? In the same way that the most simple melodies are often the most infectious, right? Something it also could, could be though is it could be something that isn't actually the musical idea itself, but it's the, the sonic expression of the idea. And this is something unique to electronic music, right? This is something where, when I was talking about Let It Be earlier by the Beatles, that is not a song where the tonality of it necessarily is going to be the thing that makes it what it is, right? That's explicitly the melody and chords and, and, and the harmony and the combination, right? However... You know, that song would be really, really different if it was played on a guitar, right, and not a piano, or on a synthesizer and not a piano, or sang by a woman and not, you know, John Lennon. Um, 
And so that's where the kind of the the most complex part of music comes into play. And that's where your role as a contemporary producer and artist comes into play, right? So like the word producer has become really, really, I think, misused and confused, right? When people say you're a music producer or if you say I'm a music producer, right? Like what does that actually mean? I don't know what that means, you know? I, I have a, a, an assumption about what that could mean when someone says that to me, oh, okay, you use Logic or Ableton or FL Studios, you know, or Cubase uh, or whatever it is, right? And you, like, generate music somehow, right? But being a music producer can mean anything from, like, someone like me who was sitting in a room, you know, full of tens of thousands of dollars worth of analog synthesizers and gear and amps and guitars and drums and all this stuff or it can mean someone that's sitting in front of a computer that is only putting together splice loops and the thing is is that neither of those descriptions of a producer is more correct than the other it doesn't matter like you know my personal my personal philosophy and preference is to use a lot of tactile things right and uh, to use a lot of different pieces of gear that have unique character but that's just me. That's not like how you make music. That's not that's not um, the only right way, right? That's not the way that every professional record has to be made. In fact, most songs made these days don't have a lot of those things involved, right? So like, how is it then? What what's the what what is it that makes someone who is just throwing together loops from Splice? How is it that I could still sit here and respect them? right as a person who is completely generating everything from scratch the answer is simple it's not what you use it's how you use it period i always give this example to my students when i'm teaching songwriting classes i would much rather have a recording of jimi hendrix uh, playing a terrible guitar with a terrible amp recorded with a terrible microphone than a million dollar recording, right, of someone who's not very good at the guitar. The, the, the medium of expression is secondary to the expression itself. And I, I really want to emphasize this to you guys because I think a lot of the times people get caught up in, is my mix good enough? Is my kick fat enough? Uh, you know, is my bass fat enough? Are my synths fat? lush enough you know are my textures interesting enough all these things right and don't get me wrong every single one of those things that i mentioned is important but they are secondary they do not matter if you do not have a good idea they do not matter if there's not soul in your music they do not matter if the musical idea itself is not something that makes me want to dance that makes me want to cry that makes me want to laugh that makes me want whatever it is you know if it's not something that immediately imparts an emotional effect on me, I'm not interested in your music, period. And I don't think it's good music, period. Now, that might seem a little aggressive and intense, but I think that it is important to keep that in mind. I think that it is important to keep perspective that if you have a great idea, it doesn't matter how badly you produce it, it's still a great idea. And it may be that you need someone who's a good producer to help produce the idea. So what was a producer back in the day when the Beatles, I'm just going to keep coming back to this because it's such an easy example. What was a producer in the day of the Beatles? What was a producer in the day of Pink Floyd? What was a producer, right, in the day of like, of early hip hop even, right? Like, what, did, what was a producer's job? Because it sure as shit wasn't to sit in front of a computer and to, and to, right, and to, like, mess around with loops and play with plugins. That's not what the producer did. What a producer's job was was to listen to the music and go, how can we express this in the best way that will service the heart of the music? Right? That's your job. Your job is convoluted and complicated right now because your job is also to be the musician. 
What's the difference between the musician and the producer? The musician is the one who says, I like the way it sounds when I play the notes A and E together. And then when I play the notes D and G together, right? That's the musician. The musician is the one who is able to, um, who generates the, 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 the tonal relationships, right? The harmonic content, all the, all the, the things that make it actually you're able to engage with, right? The producer is the one that then says, ah, I see what you're doing, musician. What I'm going to do is I'm going to help you turn this into the best version of those notes, the way that you're playing them. That's what production is. Music production is taking a musical idea, right? The harmonic relationships and the rhythmic relationships and expressing them in a way that best serves the emotion that those notes and rhythms are trying to convey. So that's where the artistry comes in, right? Because when I say the best way to convey it, there is no best way. That's totally subjective, completely subjective, right? And that is also where like genre comes into play, right? If you are not a hip hop producer and you want to take a hip hop song and turn it into a house music record and do a cover of it, right? You're going to express and explore it in a different way. And you might think this would be better as a house music song, right? So like a house music producer versus a pop producer versus a uh, hip hop producer versus a jazz arranger. If you give them like right, the same combination of chords and rhythms, they might interpret it completely differently and so that's what your job is as a producer is to interpret you're an interpreter of music that's what you're really trying to do and now that's the beauty of where we're at in music production these days is that you have this computer in front of you that allows you to interpret it in basically any way that you want sometimes you might need a microphone sometimes you might need a guitar you know sometimes you might need a saxophone whatever it is that you want to access right but even in those cases you can still fake it right you can still express it to a certain extent and that's so fucking cool you know that's so cool and anyway i think that i can stop with my little you know monologue here and actually you know i do want to make sure that on this final day i can show you how i actually go about trying to find and capture that moment that soul right in production. Um, thank you guys for bearing with me. I appreciate you sticking around and listening. You know, I hope that you're finding some of this helpful. I appreciate everything that you guys are saying in there. And um, so Mar I actually am scrolling through the chat and Mark Morgan has a really interesting question. He says, what about the process vice versa, feeling the emotion and wanting to capture it musically? So yeah, let me, let me be clear about something. And I said this to my students uh, yesterday, um, you know, there are different ways to approach composing music. And a lot of the time it's not starting with the notes, it's finding the notes, right? So to answer your question, Mark, it's not, the process totally can be right, vice versa, right? Which is, um, you feel a certain emotion and you want to express it, but you're not sure how to express it. And when you find something that, that rings correctly with you, you know, you will, um, yeah, now this is the most like random question from Sufist, but whatever, dude. I'm going to answer your question. Uh, do I have a favorite Waves audio plugin compressor? Yes, it's the it's the TG uh, it's the Kramer Pi, the Kramer PIE or the TG12345. Um anyway, so let's make some music real quick. Yeah, you know, we still got time here on the stream. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to jump into the Ableton machine and I'm going to start throwing some stuff together. I'm going to show you how I look for finding that, that thing that connects with me. Now, I hope that no one is feeling self-conscious if they don't identify as a musician, right? Because not everyone can play an instrument. Not everyone has learned to play an instrument, but there's so many really successful producers who don't know how to play an instrument. So like 
if you're a producer, then what is it that you're looking for? Where are you starting from, right? What are you generating? So one of the first things, you know, th one of the things you can do is, is to, um, you know, start with like searching for samples, but I don't really want to want to do that. Um, for me personally, I like to start from something that I generate, right? So something from like melody maybe. So I'm going to go ahead and drag on the wavetable synthesizer in Ableton. And since we're in a kind this is a very, you know, a somber day for me or a mixed mixed emotion, bittersweet day, right? Cuz the final time I'm going to be streaming with you guys, what I'm going to do is is I'm going to try to capture something that actually make something that actually literally captures my emotions. So instead of going, oh, let me just throw something together for you guys on the spot, right? And just throw bullshit at the wall. I'm actually going to try to make something that I would normally want to make. So I'm going to throw on the metronome because I want to be able to play this, figure out already what time I want to play this in. So I'm going to extend this out. I want to make something. All right, so I kind of like... I kind of like this little scale here. I kind of like that. It's a little, it's a little morbid. It's a little morbid. It's a little sad, but um. So this is my point, right? I'm not connecting with that. It sounds nice. Very Neapolitan. But it's not really what I'm feeling. Let me try to start from that same note again. Because I like this note. kind of like that I like that that kind of connects with me I think musically let me see if if I am if I can now turn that into something to express that as my producer right as the production side of me yes big rob this is going to be my final stream but at the end of the stream stick around i'm going to tell you who's going to be taking over for me because it's exciting so now right that was the musician in me the musician in me played those notes the producer in me is now going to try to make those notes something cool that i resonate with So I'm going to go for one of my favorite reverbs in the game, Torverb 2.
I really like that. So that that resonates with me. I it's putting me into like a trance a little bit, to be honest. So flip. Next thing I'm gonna do is that any of you. <laughs> I love that simple Sam. Yes, my alter ego is gonna be taking over next week. Um, so every combination of notes implies a combination of chords. This is the truth. So what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna figure out what chords am I implying. I don't actually know. I'm gonna have to try to f figure that out. I'm gonna use wavetable again. Wavetable is probably my favorite synth for for you know sculpting sound and so i'm going to delete each of these notes command a hit legato so i have them full out and now i'm going to try to figure out what <laughs> big round no i did not i did not i did not get fired from 343 labs i'm simply uh taking some time off to focus on some personal projects um don't not to worry not to worry all things are rosy in the garden um yeah, so what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to try to figure out what notes am I implying here, right? My suspicion, actually, it's not a suspicion. I know for a fact. This is, this is a minor scale. So, you know, I'm going to have to figure out what, what scale it is that I'm playing. Looks like it's probably F sharp, F sharp minor. I think that's the scale that I'm playing. So I'm going to go ahead and make a bet on that and make my last chord F minor. Ooh, okay. So F, sorry, F sharp minor. So that already, I think I made a good guess because I can see that there's a shared voice, right? So that means it's probably the right thing. So if I go now F sharp minor, I'm going to assume I'm in F sharp minor, right? This is the five chord. So the five in F sharp minor is also minor. But, oh, excuse me. Whoa. But I do not want to. I do not want to. Uh, I want to change the voicing. It's like I want the C to be the leading voice because that's what the melody is. So I know the A is the three. The three in a minor is, or sorry, in, in a minor scale is always going to be um, major. And I can see that again, that lines up, right? Right there. So I know that my guessing is going well. these chords up that is correct so I just voiced it too low so I'm gonna yeah so I'm gonna use these chords and throw them okay so mark this is a good question um, do you ever have trouble translating emotions into music? Uh, sometimes, but that more has to do with the emotions than anything else. That's the emotions themselves, I think, than the, what I'm doing with music. So this is where like the learning process of music production, and as a teacher, I, I really want to like just impart this into you, is I'm not telling you that you should learn music theory uh, because everyone needs to know music theory to be a musician. You don't. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm telling you to learn music theory because that's how you translate emotion. 
in music, right? Is I actually know, um, like how to put chords together in such a way to evoke a certain feeling, right? I know that when I put certain combinations of notes together or certain scales that, um, I'm probably going to capture a certain type of feeling. So, I would, so, so my recommendation for you is for, is there any remedy or practice I can do to get better would be sharpen your music theory knowledge. Maybe even learn an instrument if you don't know one already or practice an instrument and get better with it. The expression of emotion through the instrument is the way that you capture the emotion, you know? You want something that you can interact with and connect with seamlessly to channel your emotion through. So that would be my recommendation. Okay, so I just did a little bit of a trick just to see what would happen. Um, one thing I like to do when I'm using synthesizers is you can tune the oscillator up in semitones. And so what that means is, is that every note, right, every musical interval... Um, is a semitone, semitonic interval, at least in like, you know, Western music and in like an Ableton type synthesizer. And so what I mean by that, right, is that the semitones are 12 semitones per octave. Um, and so when I go up seven semitones, what I'm doing is, is I am going um, up a perfect fifth. Now, I do this sometimes on chord progressions just to see what would happen. Because it's going to take every voice that I play and add a fifth to it. So the fifth of this, or rather the fifth of E, is going to be... Uh, excuse me. Is going to be this uh, C sharp, right? So that note gets canceled out. But what does end up happening... is that the, the D sharp is the fifth of the G sharp. So that's going to be expressed as well. So you get kind of a new chord out of it. So I'm going to change the voicing of the chords a little bit. I'm going to try this. I might even I might start with the G no nah, I don't like that start with the C sharp so now let me make this chord this sound into something more interesting that I like I'm going to use some LFOs here Use 
two off two off foes. <laughs> Major six, thanks you, Max. This is my point. You don't need to know music theory that well to be able to make good music. <laughs> Can't rattle that stuff off the top of my head. So I want to make that, that those chords a little more lush. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw on a chorus effect that I really like from Universal Audio, which is the Bucket Brigade chorus. Throw that to some reverb. Maybe I'll throw a delay before the, the reverb on the blip. I think I'm going to make a counter melody to the blip. Kind of create a chords out of it.
not worried about rhythm right now. I just wanna. I'm feeling super melodic, so I'm just gonna add some bass now. And for now, I'm just gonna add a sustain bass. I'm gonna be lazy to an extent. And just add the root note here, right? So. change the second time around. Cavitator's punish button. I'm avoiding that for this track. Alright, so let's see if I can get some drums going. Some kind of cool drum. So I'm actually going to make a drum from scratch. I don't want to fuck with the sample. The sample's gonna ruin my vibe, dude. I don't want to have to listen to all the crap. I'm gonna just make a drum sound out of analog. A snap or something. take an oscillator and drop its octave so low so it's kind of like the oh wow I actually put on an F sharp that's hilarious which is the root and 
make it like the bottom of the chord. So a good trick for making percussion from scratch is is make it so deep that there's no tonality. Like that. So maybe now what I would do, actually apropos to your suggestion, on the decapitator.
that's what I'm hearing. Right, so I'm gonna have to now try to create that. I think the easiest way for me to do that is to just go to an 808 kit. here Ooh That's a good part of the song. I just accidentally did that. I like when it loops like that. So yeah, now I gotta... That's what I want. Yeah, there we go. They get some snares in there, some kind of click sound. Now, I love this plugin from Waves uh, for like 808 type hi hats. Just, those are boring sounding. I'm sorry, they're just they're not interesting. You know. I do think we can add an actual kind of clap layer there somehow. And I'm going to use a cool feature in Ableton to make this clap layer. out of these claps I'll show you why so I'm gonna warp them on beats mode and I can shape the transient So I need to just, I already, I can hear there's a crazy amount of low frequency sub information in the clap. Um, when I, when I, hmm, interesting. When I program the drums, do you figure out the rhythms by ear? Or do you place the rhythm? So I figure out the rhythms by ear 
but I always notice that they're subconsciously placed deliberately. Every once in a while, I'll just do, I, I will do it deliberately if I'm not really sure where to go. But I try to let, uh, I try to let it be guided. I try to let myself get guided to it organically. So we we're just clipping a little, so I'm turning it down. But I also don't want you guys to be deprived of loudness, so I'll just throw on the L2. something here right that I'm connecting with seriously so then, then the next question right is like how do you take this to, into a territory that is something that actually is a song now right so that's the next hardest part okay I captured the emotion the bittersweet feeling of leaving or whatever right you know um, so I'm also gonna I also am putting this auto filter on the hi-hats. So this is one of the best tricks in the book to get your hi-hats to be more alive is take an, the auto filter and use a really, really fast rate. I know it might not seem fast, but it's fast for your ear. Um, and turn the amount up and keep the frequency really high on the hi-hat so it barely moves. And it adds this little bit of li live, live feeling to it. I also want this clap to be in some reverb. this synth line I think I could put in here and I have to confess I'm gonna have to actually go in a second unfortunately as much fun as I'm having doing this um, I have to shoot like a music video <laughs> but um, I think I can accomplish this Try, I'm gonna kind of make this like this kind of like you'll see what it is I love I like throwing on like uh, arpeggiated information that's that's like in three four on top of things that are in four four
see what that sounds like. Oops, I did this in the wrong Where am I? I did this in the wrong place. All right, let's combine all these together. So I know I want to go down to B. somewhere. See if that's it. I'm not sure if that's what I'm hearing, but I think that'll sound really cool. Yeah. Whoop. should bring us cleanly home.
throwing it to this filter. Now I'm going to distort that. I'm going to, one of my favorite things to do. Oh, it sounds so cool. Is to throw on these preamps. Uh, okay, cool. Uh, from Slate. And I can't get enough volume into it, so I'm going to hit that. Wait. stuff out fitting place to end a fitting way to end cool yeah so um i appreciate uh you guys tuning in and staying tuned in and i hope that uh you found the production session on the back of the philosophy session to be helpful uh as i mentioned and maybe you didn't hear it because if, if you if you came in a little bit later um this is my last stream for the you know indefinite foreseeable future for 343 TV. I'm taking a little bit of a step away for a while to just uh, focus on some personal projects and um, some other work music related. Um, it's been awesome getting to know you guys in the chat um, and hearing some of your music as well in some of the uh, 343 Studios feedback sessions. Uh, and so, you know, if you are uh, just joining for the first time and you just caught this today and you're like, wow, what have I stumbled upon? Uh, this was 343 TV, uh, and this is the online free educational branch of the uh, music production school, 343 Labs, based in New York City, Berlin, and online. And I would highly encourage you to hit the subscribe button and to visit 343labs.com and to look out for our Discord as well and become a part of the community. There's tons of amazing producers that are learning so much from each other and helping each other grow and pushing each other. And it's an absolute uh, joy to see all of you guys who have been participating and improving your music, you know. Uh, and so this is not goodbye, but simply farewell for now. And um, I, you know, certainly hope to hear from you, some of you in the future, and I hope that you continue to participate and tune in with 343 TV going forward, because we have tons of amazing content that, you know, a lot of other talented instructors are doing. Speaking of which, the man who will be taking over for me next week is named Dane Morris, i.e. a.k.a. Great Dane. He's a really, really dope hip hop and bass music producer. And he's going to be sharing with you guys a lot of really, really cool stuff. So I highly encourage you to tune in again and uh, welcome Dane to the community. Anyway, it's been a pleasure, guys. And this is Justin Beck signing off for 343 TV. Until another time. <laughs>